Hey guys, Matt from Crank Engineering here with another video and today I would like to talk about identifying bolts and nuts. Okay, we've got uh, heaps to talk about in this video so uh, let's just get right into it. I've had a question about how do I identify the right bolts and nuts to use on my motorcycle project. So let's just talk a little bit about what we might find and how that might apply to your motorcycle. So let's just start with something obvious and that would be materials and surface finishes. So these are all out of my metric 10 millimeter bucket of bolts. And with these four, let's zoom in on that a little bit and move them up there, no, down here. So straight away, you can see we've got four different finishes uh, in terms of uh, the surface of the bolt. So we've got uh, the most common, I suppose, or the simplest finish would be just a straight black oiled finish. So these are pretty much straight out of the factory. And these are steel bolts, so they're magnetic, so I can pick them up with a magnet. Uh, but you can see that the oil finish doesn't provide a whole lot of protection. So these ones that have been sitting in the container have started to get a little bit of surface rust already. So you can see a bit on the head of that one, and there's a bit on the inside of the hex in here too. So you know, in, in operation or in an environment like on your motorcycle, they're not going to not going to look like this for too long. They're going to start to rust up pretty quickly. So probably not the first choice for a motorcycle project. After that, we've got a couple of different finishes on also on steel bolts. So both of these are steel and the uh, finishes are a little bit different. So this one would be typically be a nickel plating that's applied to the bolt after it's manufactured. So it might've started out like this, but they've coated it with nickel and nickel's for corrosion resistance. So these will work fine in a motorcycle application. And these ones are a, probably a, some sort of zinc chromate or something finish to give them that yellow finish. But again, that's a corrosion protection. So again, for use outdoors on a car or on a bike would be, would be applicable as well. So those finishes are fine on a motorcycle. And the third one here, which I can't pick up with a magnet, is stainless steel. So this is fine for a motorcycle, uh, and as long as you're checking that the strength of the bolt is applicable for the application you're using it in. So I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Uh, these aren't uh, motorcycle bolts, obviously, but it's just a hardware bolt, but I just wanted to show you the finish. So this is galvanized for corrosion resistance as well. Now these are hardware bolts, so they're used outdoors but this uh, finish is galvanized, so hot dip galvanizing, so it's uh, uh, dipped in a, a solution of zinc and the coating's quite heavy and it's effective for use outdoors. Now clearly you're not gonna use that on a motorcycle and you wouldn't use any hardware bolts on a motorcycle and we'll get into that right now. Next thing to talk about is the strength of bolts and identifying that uh, depending on whether you've got a metric motorcycle or, or a bike that's built with imperial bolts, you just need to be able to under, uh, identify what you're working with. Now, if you Google bolt head identification or bolt strength, you'll find heaps of these types of uh, images showing you how to identify uh, bolts based on what's on the head. So on an imperial bolt, you will find dashes in the head that help you identify the strength. And on a metric bolt, you'll find two numbers separated by a decimal point that would tell you a little bit about the strength of the bolt. So let's see what we've got in our box of bolts here. So these are out of my metric uh, M10 uh, box of bolts. So they're going to likely have a number on them. So in this case, we've got two. So these are basically the same size, not much difference in length, five mil. And let's have a look at the head. So let me just zoom in on that again. And that should be in focus. Right, so on our plain uh, nickel plated bolt, we've got a 4.6. And on the zinc chromated bolt, I've got an 8.8. .8. So they're two different strength grades of metric bolts. And I'm not gonna tell you what the exact strengths are. You can look them up in tables and in books and stuff all over the place. So that's not hard to find. Uh, but you've also got to know what was, um, what, what's the strength required for the application. So the best way to, to figure that out is well, what came out of the bike and then what are you putting back into it. Now sometimes on, on uh, your older motorcycles you won't have any markings like this. But a 4.6 or an 8.8 .8 grade metric bolts are structural bolts. So they'd be good for replacing fasteners on your motorcycle. 
So that's metric. Let's have a look at some imperial bolts. Here's some half inch bolts. Uh, basically the same size, so half inch by one and a half inches long. Uh, one's a black oiled finish and one's a zinc chromate or whatever, the, whatever this uh, yellow stuff is. Uh, are they both steel? Yep, that's steel. Yep, that's steel as well. So they're both steel bolts. But let's have a look at the heads on these particular bolts and hopefully the black one comes up in the camera because uh, it might be a bit difficult to see otherwise. Let's zoom in on that again. So on the zinc chromate bolt, I've got three dashes. So that's a grade five bolt. And on the black one, I'm hoping you can see, but I've got six dashes on this head. So that's a grade eight bolt. So that's a high strength, that's an even high strength bolt. So these are both structural bolts that you could use on a motorcycle as well. So imperial bolts, look for the dashes on the head. I'll be looking for at least three, which is grade five, preferably six, which is grade eight. Okay. Most of this information is available in handbooks and things around the web. So I've got a few different ones. This is called the Engineer's Black Book and it's got all sorts of different details about the bolts, materials, strengths, all sorts of stuff. So if you're looking for some reference material, these sort of books are pretty handy. You can get them online. So just pick one of those up at a tool store or a supplier, industrial supplier somewhere near you. Okay, just the last thing I want to quickly talk about is how to identify uh, the threads because you get the bolts in a, a coarse thread and a fine thread. So let me just grab a fine thread. <clears throat> okay, it's probably not the greatest choice being the, the black ones, but let's have a look at these two. So these are basically the same half inch by one and a half inches long and Let's have a look and see whether we can tell if we can pick up in the camera the difference in the thread. So this one is a fine thread and this one is a coarse thread. So hopefully that's coming up in the camera. You can see the difference in the thread. Let me see if I can find another one. That'll be a better example. <coughs> okay, here's, here's a better one. So metric. So standard metric, uh, well that's actually half inch, but doesn't matter. Uh, oh, hang on, here we go. Here's a metric. So M10 by 1.25 and an M10 by one. So what does that mean? So in a metric bolt, 1.25 is the distance between each thread. So M10 by 1.25, 1.25 millimeters between threads. This is a fine thread, M10 by one, so one millimeter between each thread. So we've got a coarse and we've got a fine. It works the same with the imperial bolts. These are in black, so hopefully that's easy to see. But in the case of an imperial bolt, you're measuring threads per inch. So they're half inches in diameter, they're both the same, but they've got a different pitch, which is how many threads per inch. So you need to count that to determine what the exact uh, specification of the bolt would be. So let's quickly talk about how to do that. In the case of a metric bolt, the first thing I'm going to do is measure the diameter of the bolt. So we'll use one of our drill gauges or we can use some calipers or something like that. And we can quickly identify that it's a 10 millimeter diameter bolt. It's not, it doesn't going to fit in a 3.8, so it's definitely not 3.8. And because I've looked at the head of the bolt and I can see it says 8.8, I know it's a metric bolt. So I'm looking at my metric side of my drill gauge. So it's M10 because it fits in the 10 mil hole, but what is the thread pitch? So to identify that, you use a tool called a thread gauge, which is uh, this little guy here with a bunch of different, well, these are called leaves, and each one is designed to replicate the thread, and they're all different sizes, and they're stamped with the number. So I could go up to my 1.25 thread leaf, and that will fit exactly on a 1.25 millimeter pitch bolt. So I've identified it's metric, so it's uh, M signifies, so M, diameter is 10, so M10, and it's 1.25 millimeter thread. So it's M10 by 1.25. And the last thing you might do is measure the length, 
so that you can say to your bolt supplier, well, I need a bolt that's M10, 1.25, 40 millimeters long. So that's how you do it for metric. So in the example of my fine th thread here, I'm gonna say, okay, well, it fits in, it's got a 8.8, .8, so I know it's metric. Fits in a 10 millimeter hole, so it's M10, but the thread form's different. So I'll be going through my leaves on my thread gauge, and I'd be looking and I'd say, okay, well, can I, which one can I match it up to? So there's 0 0.75, 0 0.8, 0.9, there's one, and sure enough, matches up on the one millimeter leaf. So M10 by one, say by 40 millimeters long. So that's how you do it for metric. Now, because the metric thread is a specific shape, it's a 60 degree angle inside these threads, uh, this thread gauge is applicable only to the metric threaded fasteners. So if we're gonna go and measure up something that's, um, that's an imperial bolt, I need to go and get my thread gauge for American threads. Now, it is 60 degrees included angle, but they're measured in threads per inch. So this particular leaf is 15 threads per inch. And this one is five and a half. So obviously, the bigger the thread, the less of them there will be per inch. So if I'm gonna measure up my half inch bolt here, and we'll measure the diameter, and I haven't got a thread gauge. We'll have to use a bigger thread gauge, so half inch in diameter. So we know the diameter is good. And now I've got to figure out what is the count of threads per inch so I can identify this bolt correctly. So I'm gonna to go to my thread gauge and I don't know what the exact number is on a, on a uh, half inch coarse bolt, but it looks like it's in here somewhere. I'm gonna say 16. No, 16 doesn't fit. There's less than that. So let's go to say 12. No, it's not 12, it's probably in between. No, it's probably 14 or something. There we go. So it's 13. So half inch by 13 TPI, threads per inch. So that's how you'd identify an imperial bolt. So when you go to your bolt supplier, I want a half inch bolt that's 13 threads per inch, and it's, take my tape and I go, okay, it's one and a half inches long. So that's how you'd go and specify that bolt if you're buying those from your bolt shop. Okay, that's enough for today in terms of bolts and identifying bolts. Hopefully that was a little bit useful to you. And if you've got anything you'd need to see specifically, let me know in the comments below so that I can prep a video for you next time and give you the answers you're looking for. Thanks for watching, see you next time.